My name is Ethan Rodriguez. Today I'll be showing my presentation over the last cat 1992 failure. To begin the presentation, I would like to first expand on what exactly last cat refers to. So the first part of this acronym refers to the London Ambulance Service, which operates in the small 600 square mile area and still manages to be one of the largest ambulance services around the world, taking 2,000 to 2,500 daily calls and serving a client base of around 10 million people. Now, here in the area of operation of the service, it is easy to see how the LAS quickly began to fall behind the three-minute standard mobilization time set by the National Health Service, especially when you see the system that they were working with, which was completely manual at the time, relying on humans to both take calls and document them, as well as to identify, manage, and allocate resources. Therefore, the LAS felt pressure to create a new, effective system, and this brings us to the next part of our acronym. They felt that the computer-aided dispatch system was needed to increase their effectiveness. Now the LAS was not the first service to try to implement a CAD system, and they in fact contacted other UK services to examine their existing systems to see if it would match their criteria. However, they quickly decided that these systems would not meet their criteria, as these systems were mostly semi-manual, and they wanted a fully autonomous system in order to remove a lot of the decision making from humans. Their new proposed system would, would have the system take calls identify, manage, and allocate resources. Therefore, the LAS set their proposal for February 1991, and the system went fully operational on October 26, 1992. Now, for reasons that I will explain later in this presentation, launch did not go as planned. What happened on launch day? On October 26, 1992, the system fell under light stress at first, as they received slightly higher call rates than usual. Initially, they managed this well, However, by mid-morning, ambulances began doubling up on calls and were arriving a bit later than usual. Later, it quickly became apparent that the system was overwhelmed. As the service was losing calls throughout the system, the MAP system failed to allocate ambulances and failed to recognize certain routes, and error messages were deleting other callbacks, leading to further calls to the system. This these errors propagated and led to the cacophony of errors you see here. As you can see here, a lot of the errors have cause, of, cause and effect with each other, leading to the system to reach a cycle of failure. Recollections of this night include a woman trapped under her collapsed husband waiting for an ambulance for hours, a 14 year old asthma patient who had to wait 45 minutes for an ambulance, and an old woman trapped on the floor waiting for an ambulance only to die while waiting. The system was only operational for two days. After these two days, they chose to move to a semi-manual system in order to alleviate a lot of these issues. Right here on this report created after the issue, you can see that the response times that were met in up to 15 minutes fell drastically, as on October 26th and 27th, they fell to about 15 to 20 percent. So why did this happen, and who is to blame? So, in, in summary, everything that could go wrong, went wrong. And who is to blame could be lied upon a lot of people in the organization. However, if we really want to find the critical errors in the system, we must use SARS model to understand the system. SARS model states that the success of a system is critically dependent on the cycle between the system, the supporters, and the project organization. And so if we implement our system into SARS model, we get the following. For the system, we get the information system, our CAD system. For the supporters, we get staff and LAS management. And for a project organization, we get systems options. Now for the environment, we get LAS and NHS. Now to, to understand this issue, one must understand that the, the project almost failed at its inception, as the environment of LAS and NHS led to a lot of internal pressure leading to the project being underfunded and to management constantly and led to management to constantly fear layoffs. This led to management failing to report any failure on the project and to even ignore feedback from the staff. This led to tension between the staff and LAS management, as the staff felt that they were not being listened to and they were they didn't really understand the system until so they felt like they were re being replaced. This was not helped by project management who failed to even train them, despite many of them having no previous experience with the project organization also failed in that systems options failed to provide any load testing for the system or any quality assurance of their code. 
They also failed to implement any methodology that was established for the UK, including failing to implement Prince methodology simply because they did not understand it. Now this leads us to the failure of the information system itself. On a report done after the two nights of the incident, it was found that the system faced three critical flaws. It, replied, it relied on perfect information in an imperfect world, leading to the failure to allocate certain eminences and failure to recognize certain roles. It also relied on the cooperation between the service and the system and the staff, which was not possible seeing as how the supporters faced too much tension with the system, and so calls were being ignored or doubled up on as the staff did not trust the system. Finally, there is the clunkiness of the, of the system itself, which was poorly programmed and so error messages constantly popped up, leading to loss of a lot of calls, which led to further callbacks, which led to further error. Finally, in an ironic twist, it was found that a small programming error was the cause of the system's final shutdown, as the system shut down on November 4th simply because the file server memory was not clear, leading to the eventual death of the system. So what is the fallout of the failure? In the short term, we must first examine the loss of life. Estimates show that around 20 to 46 emergency patients were lost. The economic, although the economical cost was low, as there was only 1.5 million pounds lost, with the major issue being the loss of the CEO of the LAS, John Wibley, as he was forced to resign after the issue. In the long term, one can say that the system failure led to the flourishment of the LAS, as they, as they had a new CEO now who understood the need for proper management, and so he implemented new management and executive boards into the service. This new service was responsible <coughs> for a new CAD system, which was implemented in 1996. It failed to meet a lot of the criteria for the previous system, however, it, it succeeded in improving on a lot of the previous models, failures. And so, as you can see here, in 1996, when it was implemented, there was a serious improvement in the three minute response rate. Here are my sources and my contact information.